Welcome to Cloud 941, the only live television show about Sarasota politics and issues. I'm your host, Ron Filipkowski, and first and foremost, you may notice again this week we are experiencing a little bit of technical difficulties here in the studio, and the picture may appear a little darker than normal. It's not your TV, it's us. We expect to have this fixed in the next couple of days and have a clearer picture for you, but the content of the show is going to be great. we got a lot packed in tonight. I uh, also want to let you know that we've made a deal with uh, 1490 AM, which is Reality Check, is the name of the uh, radio show, where I appear every Tuesday morning on 1490 AM as a guest on the show to talk about Florida politics at 10 o'clock. So check out Reality Check. It's a great uh, political talk show where I talk about state politics on that show. Now, this week we had our camera crew, which Chris Miller, by the way, is a producer of, our, of all of our uh, off-site location videos. He does a tremendous job and he's also our webmaster on our website uh, clout941.com and uh, what we did is we took our crew, Chris and I, went out to check out the youth baseball facilities in Sarasota County. Here's why we did this. I've been in youth baseball for years, past president of the Sarasota County Little League and I, I know as well as everybody else involved in it that the youth baseball facilities in Sarasota County are some of the worst in the state of Florida and you really see this when you travel around the state. So we took our camera crew and we compared two of the biggest ball, youth baseball parks in Manatee County with two of the biggest ones from Sarasota County to look at the differences. The reason why we did this is there's been a lot of talk about Sarasota County spending a lot of money to invest in major league teams to come here for spring training. Well, we wanted to show that there's an urgent need for some dollars to go into the youth baseball facilities which are sorely, sorely neglected. Let's roll the tape and check it out. We're here at the Braden River Little League Park in Manatee County. And the first thing we're going to look at are parking lots. You want a nice paved parking lot so that the moms and dads who come to the games and the grandparents don't need a car wash as soon as they leave because their car is either covered with mud from the rain or dirt and dust. You see here the Braden River parking lot, first of all it's nice and spacious with a lot of big, a lot of parking spaces. Uh, there's no potholes here. It's all completely paved so nobody who leaves this park at, on, after a rainy day or, or, or any other day is going to need a car wash. Here's the parking lot at Lakewood Ranch Little League in Manatee County. Here you see it nice and paved, lots of uh, parking spaces, no potholes, everything's paved and nice and smooth. We're here at Twin Lakes Park in Sarasota and one of the first things you notice of course is the parking. Although they have a paved road leading into the parking lot where the cars actually have to park is not paved. You can see here uh, this, this becomes after they get a little rain out here a lot of mud and muck to park your car in. We're here at the parking lot of the 12th Street Little League Park in Sarasota County. We had to negotiate some pretty heavy-duty potholes on the way in here. As you can see, none of this is paved. Lots of potholes, lots of ruts. Obviously, if they get any rain here, it's a mess. The next important thing is outfield fencing, and we're here at Braden River uh, Park in Manatee County. In the professional uh, outfields, they obviously have the padded fences, and you're not going to have that at a youth park. But what you do want is a fence that's safe. Here at Braden River, you can see this fence is very safe. It's a chain-link fence, so the kids, if they run into it, are not going to get hurt. Plus, it has the safety barrier at the top, so the kids aren't going to hurt their arms reaching over the fence, or they're not going to hurt their head by smacking into it. This is nice plastic safety barrier. Here's the outfield fencing at Lakewood Ranch Park in Manatee County pretty much the same as at Braden River, chain link fence and the, with the plastic safety barrier on the top to protect the kids. We're here at Twin Lakes Park in Sarasota and at first glance it appears the outfield fencing is similar to the fencing in Manatee County and that they have this old this protective barrier but as you can see this is very old it's cracked there's holes through it pieces of the metal fencing are sticking up through not much of a safety barrier this is pretty dangerous. This is the outfield fence at 12th Street Little League in Sarasota. Concrete. Bad idea. The 
the most dangerous part about a youth baseball park are foul balls. The reason is because there are a lot of young kids out here, a lot of siblings and babies that run around while the parents are watching games, and foul balls are like missiles or grenades that fly out of these parks and can hit kids that are walking around. It's important to have a nice high fence behind home plate and in the, in the areas where there are a lot of foul balls so that the fencing will block as many balls as possible. Here at Braden River Park in Manatee County, you see at least a 40-foot high fence and the top level of fencing is inverted in so that just about all of the seriously dangerous foul balls are going to get blocked here and not go out into the crowd where there are young kids. Lakewood Ranch Little E, we have the, the backstops here. As you can see, the fencing here is about nice and high, about 30 feet. And they also, very important, have the safety netting above that overhangs. This keeps pretty much no, allows no foul balls to go out into the crowd to hit anybody. We're here at Twin Lakes Park in Sarasota checking out the backdrop fencing. We talk about one of the most dangerous parts of these parks is foul balls. And there's some subtle differences here between the back fencing. First of all, it's not as high as in Manatee County. Second of all, they don't have the safety netting overhanging that protects you from foul balls. And the third thing is that the fencing stops about 10 feet up the baselines. So a lot of foul balls actually go out that area, and that's where a lot of kids play. And the, and the fencing doesn't go far enough out to really protect many foul balls. This is 12th Street in Sarasota County, and we're looking at the backdrop fencing. Very dangerous here, you can see. The fencing is not that high, number one. They don't have any of the safety netting that goes over the top. They have a little bit of an angled fence, but it's only directly behind home plate. It does, it's not on the sides of the fences, and there's just no protection here whatsoever for foul balls. Balls, balls just fly out of here like crazy. The quality of the grass is also extremely important. Here at Braden River uh, Park in Manatee County, you see they have nice, thick, plush Bermuda grass. No weeds out here. No potholes or holes for the kids to step in and twist their ankles. It's nice and smooth. It's thick, and it's plush Bermuda grass. This is the outfield grass at Lakewood Ranch Park in Manatee County. Once again, nice Bermuda grass. No potholes, no holes in the outfield. Real smooth thick with no weeds. Here at Twin Lakes Park in Sarasota, just want to show you the comparison of some of the grass. You can see your long stringy grass, r deep ruts between the grass surface and the clay surface, and you can also see the clay surface is very rough and uh, not very well, e not even and not smoothed out. This is the outfield grass at 12th Street Park in Sarasota, which is just a collection of thick weeds, um, several ruts in the ground, potholes, uh, all different kinds of grass mixed in here and weeds. Not a very nice outfield.